We all know that theropod dinosaurs like T. rex and Spinosaurus were powerful predators with keen senses. Theropods are famous for being the largest terrestrial carnivores in history, some weighing twice as much as an elephant. But what if theropods were more than just muscle and teeth? What if these terrifying beasts were smart enough to develop cultures? That may have been the case. Neuroscientist Susanna Herculano Huzel, I hope I pronounced that correctly, may have started a revolution in estimating the intelligence of extinct taxa. Her paper, published January 5, 2023, discusses how her lab utilized isotropic fractionation, a technique to quickly and accurately calculate the amount of cells and neurons in a brain, in order to create a new system for calculating intelligence. According to her study, the old way of estimating a dinosaur's smarts, known as EQ, or in civilization quotient, is unreliable and doesn't reflect how intelligence actually works. EQ is where you compare the brain mass and body mass of an animal and generate a ratio. If the brain is proportionally larger than what you'd expect from an animal of that size, it has a high EQ and is regarded as more cognitively capable. For example, previous studies on Tyrannosaurus rex using EQ gave it a fairly low score, from 2 to 2.5. That's comparable to a modern alligator or a crocodile, which, while intelligent for a reptile, hardly matches up to complex problem solvers like ravens or chimps. However, the ways that brain and body size develop in reptiles and mammals and birds are very different. Herculano Husserl goes on to explain that there is no universal relationship between body mass and neuron density, or even brain mass and neuron density. That is a ratio that has to be determined on a clade-by-clade, -clade or group-by-group, -group basis. So that's exactly what she did. She used an isotopic fractionator to calculate how many neurons were in the pallium, the brain region that forms our cortex in mammals and the area that predicts innovative ability in birds, which are the closest living relatives to theropods. This method has actually been used previously to estimate neuron density in extinct mammals, but as far as I'm aware, this study is the first usage of the technique on dinosaurs. Pretty awesome. For each clade of animals that she studied, she based the methodology off of their closest relatives and known brain volume. She also didn't limit the study to just theropods, or even just dinosaurs. Sauropods, ornithischians, and pterosaurs were in there too. She pulled from a database of reptilian neuron density generated by Kverkova 2022 and used those values for prehistoric taxa based on how closely related they were. What she discovered was insane. There was a very clear difference between non-avian sauropsids, generally known as reptiles, and birds as far as neuron density and brain slash body mass goes, with birds possessing a significant lead. That lead applied to birds that lived before the KPG extinction as well, and goes all the way back to Archaeopteryx, indicating that other theropods had it as a basal trait. The other theropods in the study did in fact share that cladistic brain-to-body mass ratio of birds, which indicated they were an apt analog for neuron density. Sauropods were considerably lower, while ornithischians and pterosaurs depended on the species. But what were the numbers? What does this all mean? Well, Herculano Husel explains that Aluramis, a relatively small tyrannosaur, would have had just over a billion telencephalic neurons. That's comparable to a capuchin, which are widely considered to be the most intelligent New World monkeys. Triceratops fell quite a bit lower, at 172 million, since it didn't express the same brain-to-body ratio as birds and likely didn't possess that level of neuron density. Tyrannosaurus, with its study-breaking brain of 343 grams, could have had 3.3 billion neurons in its pallium that contributed to complex behavior and cognitive flexibility. That's more than a baboon's brain. As you can see in this graph, multiple species of theropods, the pink asterisks, competed with the highest neuron density values among primates and were second only to chimps and humans. A couple of ornithischians were fairly high while sauropods and pterosaurs struggled comparatively. What do we learn from this phenomenal study? One, it's dangerous to rely on universal predictors as we see with EQ. Dinosaurs were such a diverse group with so many different clades that we can't expect a single ratio to apply equally to all of the various species represented by the clade. Two, theropod dinosaurs were freaking smart. T. rex had more neuron pathways than even modern corvids like ravens and crows, which can solve complicated puzzles, engage in play, and pass along knowledge down through generations. Baboons, which also scored lower than T. rex, have demonstrated the ability to understand and track numbers. The possibilities of dinosaur intelligence and culture are vast. The author goes far enough to say that the more intelligent theropods, and I quote, had the biological capability to use and craft tools and develop a culture like modern birds and primates. I personally doubt that dinosaurs were out there shoving sticks into termite nests or using rocks to crack open oysters, 
but that's more of a lifestyle thing than a limitation for intelligence. We should seriously consider this going forward in how we depict dinosaur intelligence in the media. Let's imagine how a pair of T-Rex could set a trap for herdoceratopsians, or pass down information on a certain area of forest to their young, or recognize individuals and retain complex memories. How do you think theropods would have utilized such cognitive power? Let us know in the comments below! Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe for more videos like this. Paleontology is an ever-changing science, and I'm confident that prehistoric life is only going to amaze us even more in the future. I'm the Vividen, and I'll see you next time.